Hey, welcome to Raven Oak Art Tutorials. My name is Caleb Knowles, and I thought today we paint a mountain. So hopefully I am able to teach you a few things and we'll see where we go from there. All right, so before we begin, I put a liquid clear on the canvas, which basically is going to make everything I do kind of look a little bit more white. You can get this at your Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or anywhere for about $20, and it does a lot for your paintings. So to start off, I am gonna grab a cobalt blue mixed with a little sky blue, which honestly I don't even really need, but since I have it on my canvas from another painting, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So we'll start by making some ETS motions, just crisscross, going back and forth, back and forth, and as I'm doing this, you can observe the white, or the liquid white, I should say, picking up the blue and giving off all sorts of just wonderful effects to the painting. It already kind of looks like a stormy cloud. We'll add some more, but as I'm doing this, I'm just barely touching. And as I'm going down, I'm getting even, putting even less pressure down on the canvas because I want the horizon to be more white. So, see, as I'm going down, it gets lighter and lighter. Yes, that is looking beautiful. So, um, whenever I post these videos, please feel free to comment and give me some ideas on certain landscapes or just whatever that you guys would like to see me try to paint. I'm trying to kind of expand and try new things because um, I think any that's good for any artist, you know what I mean? So um, I'm new to these videos, so if there's any awkward pauses or me just running my flapper too much, um, please stay with me. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to do that, but like I said, I'm not used to being in front of a camera and I'm doing all this by myself, so I don't have somebody behind me telling me, hey, Caleb, you're talking too much. But hopefully we can get some more artists to come on this um, little series we're doing so they can display their styles of art and how they do their artwork. But yeah, we're just gonna keep on blending it softly. Yes, that is looking great. So. Something cool about this like wet on wet style with the liquid white, you know, besides also the horizon um, being more visible due to it getting lighter as you go down, is you can make water down here at the bottom. And I recommend that for a lot of painting unless you're absolutely sure you're not going to have water in your painting because, you know, I'd say about, 80% of my paintings tend to have water, especially if they're a landscape. And I'd rather go ahead and get it on the canvas. <laughs> so as it gets closer, it gets darker. And as it gets closer to the horizon, it gets lighter. So you know, go on ahead and make sure to leave a little bit of a white spot. You want that so that it kind of gives off a reflection. So real lightly going across, maybe blend a little bit, got your clouds up high. I didn't even need to actually add clouds to this painting, it just had it naturally. That's what I'm talking about with this liquid white. It does so many of just wild and crazy things. Let's see. All right, I'm liking what we got so far. Now, as you guys see me throughout this series, because I'm not sure if this is going to be my first episode, I actually recorded a, one earlier today. Didn't really like how it turned out. Well, not necessarily the painting. I like the way the painting turned out, but I did not like the way I sounded or the stuff I was saying. I sounded kind of dumb. So hopefully, as I accidentally have some paint from the old painting I just did on the canvas. Anyway, hopefully this one turns out better and, you know, I'm able to post this one. So we'll go ahead, lay down some Mars black, because I have it in front of me. And we'll go ahead and get a layer. So I like 
big mountains. So, and I cannot lie. Da -da -da. All right, so freaking you, you go along. Some people don't like the triangle mountains, but personally, I think they look good. So, well, yes, this is a big one. And you just, so what's cool is, I don't know if you guys have seen some other wet on wet painters such as Bob Ross or, um, let's see, Paintings with Braum, he's an awesome painter. I've learned a lot from his videos. Um, and Justin, I believe his last name is Wozniak, I might have that wrong. Go check out their videos. They got a lot of just awesome artwork. But um, you can do whatever you want inside these mounts. See how I'm just kind of scraping and I can write my name if I want to, but you know, the inside don't matter. What matters is this, this crisp line out here. So, and then you can. And the reason that doesn't matter is because eventually we're gonna grab a two inch brush and we're gonna drag the, um, the paint down. So, in fact, honestly, I don't even have to really do all of this, but I want this to be a really big mountain because I don't do big enough mountains. Like I, I love the way they look. They're probably my favorite things to paint, but I don't know. I just never really do big ones. Anyway, so here we go. What I'm going to do is grab this brush. It's kind of dirty and we're just going to drag it. Yes, I'm loving the way that's looking. When you're doing this, it's cool because it kind of gives you an idea of which mounds are in front of the other. So like I could tell that this one is gonna come across that one just based off of, like the way I've been dragging the brush. You can kind of observe that. Let me make sure you guys can see me if I need to get the camera a little closer. I think that looks good right there. And we got these crisp lines. So and then we can after we do that, we can grab some more. Yes. I know it looks a little crazy. Looks a little wild. Can't really tell what's going on with these mountains, but trust me, there is a method to the quote unquote madness. So, woo. These are some crazy looking mounts. Looks like something out of a Dr. Seuss book or something. But you know what? I like it. And as a painter, I'm the only one that really matters. So, <laughs> and same to you when you're painting. This is your world. Everybody else, they're just observing it. You know what I mean? So, as I'm dragging them down, once again, I know I'm beating the the drum over and over again over here, but the liquid white is picking up the um, the black, turning it kind of grayish. Yes, we'll, we'll make sure you that is looking dark, and and you just kind of come back, lift up. Yes. All right. Well, my crazy mountain outline is pretty much done. So what we'll do is, I kind of want this to be a monotonal, in a way, painting. So we'll grab the, where should I put the palette? Oh, there it is. Wow, I'm slacking. <laughs> wash it off, get it clean. And now we'll grab some white. And just 
white I had had a little bit of color in it, but I'm not tripping over it. So, so we'll go ahead and kind of paint from the back to the front. So. We'll paint one side at a time. That's also important. The reason you do that is so you can later go back and add shadows if you want. So. Now, it's also important to mention, you can see how I'm holding it, the palette knife, because a lot of times people, including myself, when I first got started working with the palette knife, would kind of like push in real hard, and I was holding, I think, like this, I can't remember, I was like, well, anyway, so, just put it, hold it with like two fingers, and then one finger, and just very lightly, go down with it, yes. And as you can see, it's gently coming down. And as it's doing that, the white on the, the palette knife is breaking, is I think the term. And what that is, is, is leaving little indications that it was there. Sorry about that, my, my phone went on a little power knife. I charge it. I'd really suck if I get halfway through this painting and don't actually. Now you can do this at angles because I knew when I was doing mine, normally people kind of like go and then they drag it. In fact, I can still kind of do that. And, you know. It'll give off the impression that it's, but I wanted like this mount to be real rocky and kind of vertical, kind of, I guess more like when you look at like a mountain, say in Arizona or California. I was out at California one time in my life. I was out there at 29 Palms. I'm not gonna lie, I did not enjoy the vacation. Beautiful scenery though. A lot of great things I wouldn't mind painting, but can't say that I enjoyed my company. Some of them are all right, you know, but that was different time, different Caleb, you know? So what I did was add a little bit of brown to that white and I'm adding to the left side of the camp, the, the mountain, some shadow. I was gonna do this, like I said, monotone and go go um, kind of blues and whites, but I was talking about Arizona and it just kind of made me think about how the, the mountains were out there and they were all, you know, brown in the desert. Tell you what. Now, I said this was going to be a cooler hued painting with those monotones, blues and stuff, but one of the coldest times of my life was out there at 29 Palms. I was sleeping in the back of a truck and we would wake up and be near freezing and then it'd be a hundred and about a hundred and maybe 10, 15 degrees. But as bad as it was during that time, and for those of you who can't really tell what I'm talking about, I was in the Marine Corps out there. As bad as it was, I did make a lot of good friends and still close to a lot of them today.
Давай. That my one of my first sales as a painter came from a marine I met on that trip. A great friend of mine. I had painted the Northern Lights. I didn't know at the time he actually was from Alaska. And I tell you what, Alaska, a lot of beautiful landscapes out there. Just gorgeous. And I think the Northern Lights may have been my first painting that I really kind of. Just like fell in love with painting. Like that was it was my first painting was a Northern Lights painting. Now what I'm doing right here is I'm adding some brush. Now I don't want it to cover up all of the the tree I got not tree but the mountain that we got out here. So picking up blues he's picking up everything on that and what's cool is it gives off the impression that there was you know mist or something coming off the mountain not necessarily mist but just a distance you know and we'll keep adding our trees now this this mountain is just a funky looking mountain like he is tilted he is i like him it's like nature, man. Nature's a random thing. And I heard somebody say one time that paintings are a metaphor for people too in life. You know, everybody's got differences and you know, sometimes somebody may be having a tough day and they paint a crooked tree or you know, one dying and Somebody might paint rainbows and unicorns, you know? It's just, I don't know what landscapes really say about people. I guess, like I said about the tree, I mean, maybe that's how we reflect our images. So maybe I'm, I'm wonky today. Don't think so, but who knows? Sometimes we don't even know ourselves. Anyway, enough of all that. I'll add some, some darker color. So we'll go back to some black. We'll just kind of go and give this area some, some character, you know. I am really digging the way this is looking. Yes. We'll just grab that, kind of go back and forth still. And we'll grab a little bit of the phthalo green. You know what? We'll add some green, but I'm not really feeling just green like I thought it was going to be. Maybe we'll make it fall time. Sorry for all this noise. I have a bunch of canvases and stuff. Paper, papers for painting. So we'll grab the a um, little bit of sap green. Bit of phthalo, create this color, and we'll just grab it and push. Yes. Yes, and push. Come on. It just comes right on. And we ain't gotta put a lot of detail on this. You know why? Because it's far away. Now the mountain, it's so huge that it did get a little bit of detail. But understandably trees, they're so hunched up together, you can't really tell a difference. Some might be taller than others, some might be less. I am just really feeling this. This is beautiful. What's cool is we can add a little bit of yellow, mix it with that sap green that we had earlier, and maybe just point it a little bit. Oop, put a little too much, a little bit too much there. So we'll just kind of yes. Yeah. And you know what? 
we'll just kind of go up and down with it and kind of match what's going up on the top. And the reason we're doing that is so we can go look, watch. Helps if you make noises. See, people don't know that's the secret of painting, just making random noises. All we're doing is dragging this down and watch as we get to closer to the edges we're just bringing it down a little bit more because our view would be straight at the mountain and it'd be almost as if the trees are kind of wrapping around us so you know what I'm really liking this yellow, so we'll add a little bit more yellow to make the mountains pop. Not mountains, but the trees pop. These reflections are just incredible. And what's cool is we can and then grab this, go straight across, and make sure you go all the way. And make sure the lines are straight too. I kind of went crooked a little bit, but it is what it is. Man, you could just imagine like some mooses coming out of hibernation, walking across the lake. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna build a foreground. So the way we do that is very simple. So, ooh, yeah, so that works actually. We'll grab that, that brush we had earlier and we'll get some of that sap green on it. And yes, we'll, we'll kind of give them some bushes. Yes. And it has all them dark colors on it. painting could use a tree you know so you know I keep saying that my grandmother she uh she gets on to me whenever she sees me on a video because we're on talking because I say you know a lot I guess it's a, a safety word of mine I'm bad about doing that <laughs> but Here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll make this tree go right here. Yes. I'm gonna grab the black and just bring it down. Woo. Uh, we'll, we'll grab find a good brush for that. Why do I not have a good brush for that? I should probably be more prepared for these videos, honestly. So we'll just grab you. And then yes, that's pretty much right. McDonald's because I'm loving it. I know that was lame. <laughs> Don't judge me too much. drag him up and 
You know, I can remember as a kid, me and my uncle, we would sneak onto this property down in Georgia and um, probably shouldn't be saying this, but we would um, go fishing. I was about like five years old and there was this tree that we would hang out by and it kind of looked like this one. You know, I'm not really much of a fisher. You, my brother is, he, he goes fishing a lot. He's more of a, I can't say he's more of an outdoorsman than me, but he's more of a, cause I'm, I'm a big nature observer and appreciator. But, so as we're doing this, we're just kind of lightly grabbing and pulling. So, but as I was saying, he, um, he's a big fisherman and this kind of looks like a spot where I used to go fishing, you know, it should be a drinking game for every time I say, you know. We'll just grab that and and we'll go ahead and highlight that. We'll grab some white and some brown. And we're gonna imagine like our light's coming from this angle. So we'll just grab it and And as I said, the secret of painting is making random noises. So I'm gonna grab the white. Honestly, this is gonna look better with the palette knife. So I'm gonna wipe the palette knife off. Get some white on it. And we'll just And so I put a little too much there, but it's all good because watch, I'm just gonna keep pushing and moving and You're my girlfriend right now. She's in the other room and she is yelling at me about something. But can't focus on that. You got a pain. <laughs> and she's gonna watch this video later and she's probably gonna be like, so I was yelling for you and I knew, and you knew I was yelling for you and you just ignored me. And I'm gonna be like, why? Yes, ma'am. I did. <laughs> Love her to death. My best friend. Well, her and my uh, my dog. My dog. Actually, my dog probably gets uh, the number one spot, but that's expected. I am really liking that. So what we'll do now is we'll kind of cover this up down here. Maybe give it some bushes. So. Let me go ahead and grab the, the sap green. And what's gonna happen? Yeah, you can see it. We'll keep pressing, pressing, and pressing, and pressing for this, I guess, Montana style mountain. That, that might be what we name it because I'm, I'm really getting some Montana vibes from it. And honestly, this was a a lot easier painting than I even intended for it to be. One thing I'd say it really might need is some highlights on the Yeah, and I that 
that's it right there, just some highlights. Going up the tree, maybe a little bit more green. I wanna take all the dark color away. And as I'm pressing down, I'm going as fast as I can. So yeah, I'm new to this whole, um, well, you know, all of it. I'm really new to, I'm new to painting. I'm new to doing videos of me painting. And especially now that I'm doing these videos, I got, you know, a little bit of a time crunch. So that's kind of a new thing for myself. But I've been doing a lot of new things. I've been um, doing some volunteer work in regards to helping out other people learn how to paint. And then also I've been, got a little bit of a side job teaching classes. You know, I don't have no degree or anything. I'm trying to get one. I feel like it'd be a fun thing to have. But, you know, I just was like, I got into art from art therapy, you know? I was in a rough place in my life. I'm we'll just grab some knife. And my art therapist, She's an awesome woman. She was saying, you know, if you don't like the world or the way the world is, just paint a new one. And it really kind of stuck in with me. And that's uh, how I got into art. Let's go ahead and add some brown, like some. Yeah. This looks like a done painting. I just got a few more things I'd like to do. Uh, we'll add a little bit here because I know that I got. And you know, when you get close to the water's edge, um, the plants tend to kind of grow like up, give off like almost a wheat feel to them. So let me grab. My fan brush, where are my fan brushes, and it would be the one wet one from the old thing. So let me dry it off real quick. Grab some some of that green, and we'll just yeah. Oh man. And dry it off enough. Never mind, it ain't dry enough. I don't really feel like cleaning it right now, so we'll just like, grab some yellow. <laughs> we are done with this Montana now let me get a close-up so you guys can kind of see everything um let's see is that the switch there nope whatever
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sign this and hopefully you learned a thing or two and you know, keep, in, keep up to date with everything we're doing at Raven Art Oak. Let me reword that. Ravenoakart.com. And we sell prints of every painting I do and a bunch of other artists. And if you're interested in being featured on our website, please contact me on ravenoakart at yahoo.com. And yeah, just hit me up in general. Let me know what you guys are painting. Well, I appreciate it and you know, God bless.